Hello, Mr. Pickett. Thank you, Chair. Good to be here. Good to see you. Um, Morgan Pickett from Market Forces. Um, Combank requires its metallurgical coal mining clients to have a well below uh, two degree aligned transition plan as a condition for receiving new or renewed finance. However, Combank does not extend this requirement to thermal coal mining companies. This is an issue market forces brought to the attention of the board last year, and yet this inconsistency in approach still remains. Thermal coal is the most polluting fossil fuel and one that needs to be phased out most rapidly to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement. Combank's total committed exposure to metallurgical coal mining was reported as $100 million in 2024, but its thermal coal exposure was reported as 10 times that, at $1 billion. While Combank has committed to exiting thermal coal completely by 2030, it doesn't require a Paris-aligned transition plan from its clients in the sector. Under current policy settings, Combank could continue to finance thermal coal companies misaligned with global climate goals for a further five years. One of Combank's thermal coal mining clients, Glencore, is pursuing the largest coal mining proposal ever put forward in New South Wales, a project completely at odds with the Paris, global, uh, with the Paris goals. This current position seems inconsistent with the rest of Combank's transition plan policy for oil and gas, metallurgical coal mining and coal-fired power generators. So my question is, why has, the, why has the bank chosen to not require transition plans from thermal coal clients? And when Combank updates an environment and, in, and social uh, framework in 2025, will you set the same transition plan requirements for thermal coal mining companies that you have for other fossil fuel clients? Thank you, Mr. Pickett. As we mentioned, we will, will not be funding thermal coal companies after 2030. That's a pretty um, direct statement and it's a commitment that we have made and will deliver on. In relation to the stability of the power grid, there are uh, coal plants within significant companies in Australia that will be undertaking and supporting the transition. And we believe helping those companies transition out of coal into more renewable and firmed resources is actually the right way to get the balance between supporting our goal of net zero by 2050 and one and a half degree maximum increase in temperature and having a stable power grid. So there are a number of uh, gen tailors, if I use that terminology, who are at the core of the transition and the companies best suited to help deliver the transition. So we believe that our uh, principles and our targets are absolutely aligned. And in relation to transition plans, any company that has revenues from coal greater than 25% has to absolutely have a scope one, two and three transition plan and sit within our framework. But each year we also review what our objectives are and we'll continue to review them. And based on the, the ongoing feedback from market forces, we will always take that into account. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.